Hello and welcome to our daily devotions here at Church of the Palms. As always, let us begin with some inspirational music. We are now focusing on the book of Acts, and uh, I have chapter 3. I will read the first 10 verses. Let's turn to the Word of God. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Be with us today, Lord, as we reflect about your word, as we strive to imitate you more through the teachings of your son. Amen. Keep your eyes on the road. Look forward, don't look back. Look ahead of you. Don't look down. Eyes on the ball. Oh, these are words that we hear all the time. We are conditioned to look into the future, to focus our vision forward, to avoid distractions so we can get to the prize. By looking ahead, we get there faster with no interruptions. Focus on the goals. That philosophy is great for achieving all kinds of things, but how much do we pass by without noticing? If there's one thing I get credit for in my family, it is my ability to spot wildlife. No matter where or what it is, I find it, I see it. 
A year ago in May, a group of us church people were planning on hiking part of the Appalachian Trail, and my husband had made sure to warn the guide that he would see more wildlife than he had ever seen in his career if I were to be on that trip. Before I even moved to Florida, I came to visit Sarasota with my then future husband, and I went camping. We went camping at Mayaka State Park. In the afternoon, we went to grab some supplies, and I noticed a bin with fake snakes at the, snow, at the store. And, oh, it's just to scare off undesirable birds, my husband said. Only a few hours later, finally installed in our camping spot, I went up the dirt road and called him, and I asked him if what I was seeing on the road was also because there were undesirable birds. As a Canadian native, I knew skunks and squirrels and birds and moose. I had never seen a snake. As a Floridian native, my husband had never seen such a big snake. It wasn't your friendly little black snake. It was long and quite thick and nicely colored. From then on, my eyes were very widely open. I always find myself scanning my surroundings when I'm outdoor. In fact, I went to Rothenbach Park, one of my favorite local parks, to reflect on this very devotion, and I laughed at how much wildlife I was able to spot, also thinking that most people who looked forward had to just miss. Because I know that if I look just a little further back, there will be a deer munching on some leaves, or a little bunny, or the anenga that is always hidden. You just have to look to the side, or turn your head back. And there they are. Foxes, otters, baby raccoons, the deer, the bunnies, the snakes, the painted buntings, the cardinals, the sandhill cranes with their colts. They're rarely straight ahead of you. You have to look down, you have to look sideways, and you have to look back. That's where the beauty is. And then I just like to stop and watch intently. Peter and John stopped at the beautiful gate. They looked down. They looked intently at the lame man that was being brought at the gate every day to ask for charity. Now, I don't know about you, but too often this is when I remember most my training in looking straight ahead and not looking down. If there's someone sitting down by the public's wall hoping for a few dollars, I see that and I suddenly feel like I need to pull out my cell phone and check my email as I'm entering into Publix, walking very fast because, you know, I'm a very busy person. Wait, now, what is this behavior of mine? And I know that I'm not the only one doing this, but I always feel ashamed. And whether I do give a few dollars or don't, depending on the days, I still don't look intently. I do what I need to do to avoid looking into someone else's pain. I don't want to get involved. We had a little interruption a few weeks ago, right in the middle of the pre-recording of our Sunday service. A woman quite heated entered our sanctuary and wanted to speak her mind, ideally to a pastor. And better, she was happy to see there were cameras rolling. Being off the chancel, I saw her advancing with increased energy toward the pulpit, and I was able to flag her down and ask her how I could help. She was angry. She felt unheard. She said that our work at the food pantry might be good for some, but how could she, a homeless person, manage to eat if she was given cans of food? She couldn't open them. She couldn't heat up the spaghetti sauce and cook the pasta. And my heart sank. Yes, yeah, she was angry, but I was able to look at her very intently and to feel her pain. And after speaking with her, while of course doing my best to make sure our service wouldn't be interrupted, I feel like she was just happy to be heard. She had been going to different churches to complain about the very same issue, she said. And I assumed that she probably was turned away very quickly. Security called on her because she was very restless. 
But you know what? I truly rejoiced. I leaped for joy when Kathy, our food pantry saint, heard of this and made sure that from now on, there would always be special bags for our homeless people who don't walk around with can openers, that there would be bags with meals ready to eat with items that needed no refrigeration. My goodness, this lady really wasn't asking for much. And it's so easy to say, well, you should be grateful that we're serving food in the first place. But the right combination of a homeless sister who decides to speak up on behalf of her friends whom she sees suffering, and a Peter and a John or our angel Kathy in the food pantry. And here we are, we have rejoicing and we praise God because if we just look down a little bit more and to the side and back sometimes, we get to see what needs to be seen. And after we look intently, we listen, we act. We change our world one little gesture at a time. There's so much that is right there under our eyes. So much beauty that is ready to be uncovered, relationships to be made, change that needs to happen. And if we look down, we see that right next to our homeless brother or sister sitting by the door at Publix, Jesus is also sitting there with them. Pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the hidden gems you plant all around us for us to discover. This world, your beautiful creation, is filled with treasures to be found with variety in everything you have brought to life, from colors, sounds, scents, shapes, and sizes for us to admire. Open our eyes to these moments that call on us to take action so we can invite more people to rejoice and praise you. Help us see strangers who need to enter into a relationship with you beyond a few dollars they're asking for. Give us ears to listen and let the Holy Spirit move into our hearts so that we may never miss an opportunity to grow into new relationships with those around us. Make us sit down with Jesus where we find him. We pray all this in the risen Lord, your Son and our Messiah. Amen.